In this video, we're going to talk about mental health and Parkinson's. And there's a strong association between declining mental health and patients who have Parkinson's disease. Until recently, mental health and Parkinson's disease wasn't really considered. However, there's been quite a few studies recently, and especially with COVID-19, into the mental health and well-being of patients with Parkinson's disease. And that hasn't really happened until 2017. The most recent survey was conducted in 2012 by Parkinson's UK and it surveyed 13,000 members and it actually found some surprising things that then led on to this surge in mental health wellbeing for Parkinson's patients. And it actually found that of these 13,000 patients, 58% of them suffered with depression, 63% had difficulty concentrating, 45% experienced fear, anxiety or panic, and 30% had experienced episodes of psychosis. One of the problems with Parkinson's and medication is that a side effect of many of the medications are related to depression, can provoke anxiety, fear and panic, and also psychosis as well. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword that these mental health problems can naturally be brought about by the medication. There's also that strong link of mental health problems and developing Parkinson's as well. And some of these patients may well have had depression, anxiety or psychosis prior to actually being diagnosed with Parkinson's as well. Probably the most interesting and alarming thing to come out of the 2012 survey of the 13,000 members of Parkinson's UK was the fact that only 11% of these people have actually been seen by a professional in mental health. And that's quite alarming and that's where you all come in, is when you're seeing and assessing Parkinson's patients, it's having that conversation of are they okay and do they need help? And a lot of them will say that they feel down, that their symptoms are getting them down, and that's the time to try and get them help and support. And the help and support can be in the sense of CBT, but what it usually is, is actually things like exercise, physiotherapy and socialisation which can help to relieve those symptoms and give them coping strategies as well. Next we're going to watch a video from Parkinson's UK and it's of a gentleman called Gary and his perspective of having Parkinson's and also mental health problems. White. Absorb surroundings. Ninja focus. Lower your heart rate, control your breathing. Proceed. Go on, Till. Come on. If you're having a bad day, it's quite a good phrase I use if you're in a place like this. It's, it's, it's an abbreviation called WASP, W-A-S-P. Um, you can wait, absorb your surroundings, and then proceed. And it gives you time just to step back out of things and take stock. Wasp. Good boy. I kind of have had a, an ang anxious makeup for many years. So what came first, the chicken or the egg? Because when I was diagnosed and found that mental health symptoms are associated with Parkinson's disease, I, it was, it was as, in a strange way, it was a bit of a relief for me to kind of find out that it was all connected with the Parkinson's disease. One triggers the other, so if I'm emotionally having a, a bit of a bad day, my, my self-esteem's low, that will affect my physical symptoms, and vice versa, if I'm struggling with poor balance, spatial awareness, coordination, that also affects my emotional well-being, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. I can actually feel the dystonia setting in now, up my right leg, so sorry. This is the real me now, James. Yeah, yeah. I like to think of this place as my sanctuary. I get a chance to clear my head, use my ninja focus and control my breathing and lower my heart rate. I kind of think it's borderline mindfulness. Well, wherever you live there, there has to be a green space and on a lovely day, just go out and practice your ninja focus. Till's a, a massive asset to me, he's a friend, he's a companion. You have to walk him and so it encourages me to get out and about. And no matter how 
bad I'm feeling within myself and he's such a pleasure to be with. And I know not everyone with Parkinson's is in a position to get a dog, but I found Till, my lovely little Till, such a great help for me to accept my condition a lot better. Come here. Good boy, sit. I don't know how sometimes I get through my day, but just to do something simple that you feel like you've achieved something within a day can improve your self-esteem. In the video, Gary raised some quite interesting points and I hope that you picked up on many of them. And I think one of the major ones for me that I picked up on was that he did have previous mental health problems and Gary quite openly and honestly said that he suffered with anxiety all of his life and his Parkinson's has actually made it work. And that's that link between the etiology of Parkinson's. We're not quite sure what caused it, but Gary certainly had one of those multifactorial factors in that he had a previous mental health problem. The other interesting thing that he said was that his bad days, and Parkinson's patients do have those bad days when their symptoms will be worse, their cramps will be worse, their tremors will be worse. These can provoke or make these anxieties or depression worse. And what you find is that Parkinson's have good days and bad days. And what that causes them in return is to have good days and bad days with their mental health as well. Which is why symptom control with Parkinson's is so important. And taking that approach of medication, physiotherapy, exercise as well, to try and promote the dopamine release and try and get them some sense of normal life. The other interesting thing that Gary said is that he seemed to get a muscle contraction, dystonia, and then he said that this triggers the real me. And to me, this was almost like he was trying to take him away from himself, away from the disease of Parkinson's, which promotes his anxiety. I thought that one of the most interesting things that Gary did was that it was very obvious to me that he practiced mindfulness in that he had his WASP algorithm that he was able to go outside and appreciate the environment. He had his dog as well. He was able to appreciate nature. But also I think a key point that I picked up on watching that video is the fact that he's regularly out exercising with his dog. And he quite openly said as well, even when his Parkinson's is bad, he's got to get out and he's got to get out with his dog and he's got to do that exercise.